Hello, guys on YouTube. How is it going? It is Faker coming at you once again with another Legends of Runeterra video. Today, I would like to share with you guys one of the classics, one of the original, one of the OG. Uh, you wouldn't believe it. King Cow Elusives. <laughs> we back on this train once again. Now, I'm uh, going to low-key say that I believe the Elusives will be quite strong coming into the next patch. I don't know if they're going to be targeted. Other aggro strategies will be. We'll have to wait and see, but I've got high hopes, I guess. Well, high hopes. I wouldn't even know if I call it high hopes. What would you call it? I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, uh, for anybody that wasn't playing earlier in the series of Rune Terror, series of Rune Terror, what the fuck does that mean? Anybody that wasn't playing in the earlier days of Rune Terror probably might not have seen this very often. This is King Cow Elusive. This is the original elusive strategy that was quite potent on ladder for the longest time and a very effective deck. Tier 1 deck multiple times, okay guys? And this is going to be uh, just kind of like the very same core. A couple of cards that will be different, um, obviously for the players that would be aware of the cards that are similar. You'll probably see them here roughly, but we'll talk about the cards first of all that are different and why they are here. So Fear of the North has been proving to be just a very strong burst tool for dealing damage or saving units. Oftentimes, Fear of the North is usually used to push damage, and that would be where it's most effective. But there might be a niche scenario where Fury of the North can be played on a defensive to, you know, save a key unit. It's basically just like repost, okay guys? But I can oftentimes play around a lot more than that. Some of the other additions at the moment is actually just going to be... That's going to be it. <laughs> I guess we could talk about Retreat. This is probably not the most uh, necessary card, but this is a card I've been finding to do some really amazing things sometimes. So being able to like Retreat Shadow Assassin to replay it for card draw is great. Another interesting uh, thing you can do is uh, playing a unit on turn... Like if you floated mana for the first couple turns and you maybe drop a Zed on turn three, your opponent may be looking to kind of uh, threaten to remove it with a spell. Or maybe they just like, you know, have some units on board and they might threaten a really good block. Uh, you can retreat it and replay it. So that's kind of cool there. That's one of like the most unique aspects of it. I don't really use it much outside of that, but you can every now and then maybe flip an Omen Hawk back into your hand and then replace like a Shadow Assassin or a Zed and then replay the Omen Hawk. It's another trigger for getting more Omen Hawk buffs. And in some matchups that is relevant. Also, just kind of like denying your opponent's removal, and this is kind of like another card in hand, but it's very flexible. It's very niche. I like it. I like the flavor of it. It does fit with the Elusives quite well. You can always uh, flip back a Navori Blade Scout as well. But without going into too much detail about the new cards I've added, let's talk about some of the old cards and, you know, why they're here. So first of all, King Cow Wayfinder. This is one of the reasons we build so heavily into Ionia. This card has the Allegiance buff for Ionia. Summon two one-cost allies from your deck. Those are going to be your uh, Navori Blade Scouts and Omen Hawks. Um, this has actually lately been a considerable card to consider cutting, but at the moment it's still quite an effective tool. It wouldn't call it the massive build around card anymore, but it's a great play on turn 4 oftentimes. And when you're pulling those Omen Hawks out the deck, getting those buffs can be kind of useful too. Every now and then, it doesn't happen as often these days, but there used to be like the combo with Green Glade Duo, and then you buff it with the Wayfinder and stuff, push, push lots of damage. But there's plenty of ways to deal with do it these days. Bilge Water has like so many tools for dealing with a card like this. And uh, you don't oftentimes see that anymore. So Wayfinders pretty much just become like a decent 4 drop. I believe that if we find some better cards in the future, this might be a swap. And then maybe that could mean we can start to like shift away from building so heavily into Ionia. There's obviously other elusive decks out there. There's like the Noxus Ionia elusive aggro deck, which does not run Wayfinder, but still is quite effective. This kind of just outvalues that and can push a lot more, uh, can push a lot more against control decks as well. You can definitely set up for a crazy board swing with uh, Wenfera Hatchling. This is an elusive unit that will also buff the rest of your board. If you haven't worked out, by the way, guys, we have tons of elusive units, okay? So Navori Blade Scout, Regulate Duo, Conspirator, which is oftentimes a bit of a brickable card, a considerable change in the future, but for now, fits quite well. For flipping back Omen Hawks every now and then is very powerful. Shadow Assassin's pretty just staple in any Ionia deck. Uh, Life Blade, and then of course like buffing the elusive units with Jewel Protector. Some lists have been trimming down Jewel Protector. I am sticking to the uh, fact that I believe Jewel Protector is very powerful and kind of necessary for pushing those wins against your favorable matchups. Against some of your unfavorable matchups, which is going to be Burn Aggro. 
you kind of like throw the game away. You can sometimes get the life blade value and maybe buff it, uh, keep it alive with twin disciplines, etc. But oftentimes that matchup's not favored. It kind of comes down to them drawing less effective than you and you kind of curving out. So protect is oftentimes used to buff elusive units and push more damage. It just gives you a way to like keep up the tempo. And this is kind of a tempo deck. It, it, there's no real way to label this deck, but you can call it a tempo deck, I guess, because you kind of build up to this like kind of mid game finish. Uh, outside of that, we've got some pretty staples like Will of Ionia, pretty staple in Ionia. Like we'll be playing Will no matter what deck you are, aggressive or not. And uh, Deny, this is going to be two of at the moment. I think Deny is hitting. There's a few matchups where Deny does nothing, but there's a few matchups where Deny can just really punish them, especially against other Ionia decks. Uh, being able to deny their will of Ionia oftentimes helps us. Or oh, Burn as well is quite useful. Zed, this is going to be the only champion card that's featured in this list. Now, I've seen a few lists that are experimenting without Zed. I don't agree with that. I think Zed, in the end, is just a very powerful uh, unit. Standalone, doesn't need much build around, can do powerful things, and every now and then you may even retreat the Zed and replay it to kind of throw your opponent off guard and be able to push more damage. So retreat and Zed ends up being kind of one of the common things I see, or we retreat something else to play Zed. I like Zed, and if you ever do float mana going into turn three, <coughs> pardon me guys, um, if you ever do miss a couple first couple of turns, <clears throat> you've got some decent plays on turn three with twin disciplines and Zed, or twin disciplines and anything really. Very cool deck. Um, on the surface, it's a very easy deck to pilot, but there's some very intricate moments where decision making kind of has to be pretty snap. I guess a lot of decks are like that. Maybe minus playing control decks. Every now and then you're going to have to decide how do I want to play the rest of this match out and do I think I can win if I do this? And that's the important thing to be asking yourself quite often when playing a deck like this because you can really fuck up. <laughs> easy to play, but it's also easy to fuck up if I'm being honest, guys. You can like kind of like lead yourself into like a really bad scenario where you could have played something slightly different. And I guess choosing the right time to go all in is very important with this list. Like there might be a matchup where you think it's okay to start playing out on curve, but you might be better off just <clears throat> keeping greedy and mulligans and trying to push it a bit later. Because you can sometimes outvalue control decks. And I have took games off um, Heimerdinger, for example, through cards like Jewel Protector and just kind of like sticking my units on the board over and over. But that's a bad example. Anyway, guys, I think I've been rambling on for a bit too long. We played a fair bit of games today. I went six and three. I'm not sure how many games I'm going to actually feature in the video, but I'll make sure to put some good ones in. You guys have a fantastic day. Thank you always uh, for the support, and I will see you soon. I'm convinced I'm supposed to end the round here. But at the same time, I need to kind of force him to commit resources. It's probably not correct. How's the games going? Literally just getting started, my friend. We did a tournament earlier today. And that went pretty well. Oh, we're gonna be playing some King Cow Elusives today. See if it's still got it. I believe coming into the next patch, uh, traditional King Cow might become another powerful deck once again. So he probably like leans. What does he lean into? They get excited, which probably means he hasn't got Mystic Shot in hand. I'm actually gonna retreat this. This is a chance he might not be able to develop a unit, and I could potentially get this. And we'll replay the same Zed. Zed is the card I want to play this turn though. Just tweaked the list a little bit before starting this. Wow, we actually flipped a Zed because of that. That's actually insane. Tweaked the list quite a lot prior to starting this stream. I think double retreat could be something interesting. This is a rare case scenario where that like really shined. That's not always going to happen. How's your day going, Tree? Beauty's been treating you alright. So we can always just like allow this to happen. And I'm probably going to like lean towards the kind of like Omen Hawk, Conspirator, Omen Hawk, spam. Do I actually, or do I want to replay Zed here? I probably should just replay Zed. Pretty chill, enjoying the holidays, glad it's the weekend. Yeah, so am I. 
I've been up since super early. Uh, the tournament started at like 6 a.m. our time. That was insane. Insane to wake up and went double streaming today. So that might take a fair bit out of me. I won't be doing a crazy stream. I'll be definitely uh, enjoying a couple of hours in the afternoon since it's been a while since I've caught up with some of the afternoon viewers for sure. Fortunately enough, we didn't really have a card there to play. Um, like this is a turn where he wants to play a bunch of dudes. I think I'm honestly going to open attack with Zed to try and force a lot of pressure around him. I could almost swing with the Omen Hawk as well, honestly. I doubt he's going to block the um, Omen Hawk. He might. Nah, it's probably just better off not doing that. I could have swung with the Omen Hawk and maybe played a Zed's Shadow Shift for some really big cheeses. I oh, will just chill for now. I made an elusive deck with that champ. I made it with Demacia though for the rally. Okay. So I'm probably got to the end of the game at turn four. Yeah, this deck can go pretty fast sometimes. Yeah, we're probably just gonna spam out the conspirator here. Just kind of chill out a little bit. At this point, since he has the Heimerdinger on the field, it's not going to be about the elusives attacking. It's going to be about the Zed. I do need to kind of play a bit more aggressive than this. <clears throat> yeah, we should definitely just kind of go all in here. I mean, what's he holding back? Oh, we already attacked. I forgot about that. Do you play a 3 mana or a 5 mana? That was a 5 mana one. Okay, just wanted to greet you out before I took a nap. Have a great day, Fakie. Thank you. You too. Just gonna play big 6-6. Six, six. Um, you should be able to play another spell here, right? I could potentially block this. It's kind of like, might seem weird, but at the same time might be worth forcing resources out of him just to protect this. Yeah, we kind of like really played into that, but I feel like for a moment there we were kind of in a pretty cool spot. Oh yeah, we play, played into his tricks. Uh, the scare cards, more power on with elusives. I mean, how many more three cost spells could you have? I think slow playing this turn, probably not the correct line. We're going to develop some elusive units. By elusive, I guess we're just going to go for the Shadow Assassin, Ring Glades and stuff. If I can dodge um, the three cost spells, like Get Excited or Flash of Brilliance, we should be okay. He seems to not exactly be sitting on a tremendous amount in terms of that. I could even go as far as to swing with um, Omen Hawk as well to kind of bait out the Zed's, uh, Zed's Shadow Shift to cause a cause an unexpected trade from my opponent. We're definitely going to play Shadow Assassin. Stun. If I swing with anything that's not elusive though. Might not be appropriate. He's gonna get the healing back from this anyway, so he's gonna block the um ordering might matter here, but not really. Can maybe go for a value, value game plan here. Hey, how you going today? Not too bad, sick Nick. I've been up for a tremendous amount of time though. Oh, I might catch him off guard here. Actually. Nah, 
No, not exactly. Unless I was a Z shadow shift here, that would be nine damage. I guess we'll just chill for now. I believe I will stream more this week to catch up. Good man. Hey brother, I feel you on that. Yeah. I think you were, you come into my stream earlier today, I swear. You were here in the morning. It's my second stream today. I'm trying to catch up with some afternoon viewers. Since I used to traditionally stream at this time, uh, time quite often. Maybe I should have kept mana open for deny. That could have been quite powerful. What did I play again? I summoned a green glade door and a shadow assassin. That left me outside of ranges. What time is it for me? It's 3.30 PM at the moment. Uh, nothing elusive, so as long as I survive, like what? We're just gonna come back into our turn pretty strong, right? I'm happy to like trade off units. Well, it's kind of full, which is a little bit awkward. So I'm pretty sure I can do this. Is this even correct? Or should I just take all this damage? You need like triple get excited to do anything crazy to me. I guess I can do this. Uh, obviously Wayfind is not really achieving a tremendous amount. I'll just pass here. I don't think that's deny worthy. However, it might be. It's probably not deny worthy. I think I need to like save a deny for when I actually... I can deny this to save a 6-6. Six, six. Hmm. Or I can deny something on the attack. I honestly think this is going to look kind of weird, but this is going to be my line. I think I'd rather save a deny for something during combat. I know it might seem kind of weird, but... I don't really care about the wrecks or anything. More elusive units is quite important. I could even go as far as just to flip the Z back into my hand, honestly. And we'll just replay this. Yeah, this, this should be very difficult for him to do anything here. Um... I don't think I should develop. Wait, what happens if I develop? I can't play deny then. So I guess I'll just attack. I mean, you'd have to be sitting on like a trem tremendous amount of uh, get excited here. Or mystic shots even. Okay. So we kind of like went through a little bit of a value plan there. That worked out. That retreat earlier in the game was actually insane. I got to go, maybe back later. No problem, man. Is it? GG. Thanks, Tree. Oh, God, look at that rank. Yuck. Oh, dude, what? Like, I think if I can go back in time, maybe I could have played around him yoinking my buffed up unit. Why the life blade, though? It could have been anything else. I keep the Z. No. No, no, no. He's got the spiders, so... The Zed's probably not going to connect half the time. Guess I'll play kind of slow now. Just gonna like kill this off, right? Sure. Nice. 
doing well. I think with double jewel protector in hand, we can go for a different strategy this game. That's going to be the buff up something. Can't commit them all into one though because of vengeance. Unless I want to play around. Um, first of all, I should open attack. Um, okay. Up for life blade. Why would you tank? How important is that spider to you? Maybe you can flip a lease this turn. Let's get around. Sure. my eggs in one basket. I wonder how I should feel about that. So he's trying to like set up a withering whale. I guess I can kind of outplay that with life blade. Like if I just straight up develop a life blade, what's he sitting on? He's got 10 mana, which means he can double withering whale. He can't Exactly deal with the life blade now as it is. Look at the size of that bad boy. Big boy. What do you like vengeance here now? Come on, bro. What's the play here? Be withering whales, I just deny and then hit him in the face for a lot of damage. Strange. I don't think attack auto matters here. He might just be dead here. I guess double withering whale might save him. I wonder if I just let this happen. Yeah, I should probably just let this happen. Hang on. If I deny this and he has another one, yeah, he still survives. Part of me feels like I'm supposed to let this happen. I think protecting the life blade is going to be way more key here. I've got other plays to make and he's under a lot of pressure already, so this is fine. I kind of drew the nuts against him. I don't have to play around anything right now, so I can kind of like chill. Play a couple cards. Probably just go like Conspirator. Play the Emerald Hawk again. How do you feel about that? It loses attack value, but it buffs up beginning in our deck. We can always beat Ruination as long as we keep the... Alright, we'll do this. Maybe it might be better to flip the Shadow Assassin. I have another one in hand. The Tempo's at the place the uh, Skidoro now. Nice, okay. I wonder if there's something I'm missing here. I'm happy to pass. Like, I don't need to commit much. Deny this. Now I can play these guys. An open attack. I don't think he can beat that. Unlucky. Huge life blade. Massive life blade. Incredible value. Ionia. Does anybody know what this deck is? What do I expect against him? GP Misfortune though? Oh, this is a pretty nutty opening hand though. I guess I always just keep it in Hawk Conspirator. I don't think it matters what matchup that is. Maybe I just have to go to Mobilitics and just search up the cards individually. I would hate to see a uh, parlay here, but we'll get around it. Parlay will brick my hand. The fuck? He's gonna play around spell mana, is he? Like library? Oh, 
I retreat the Emenhof, that's great. The uh, Misfortune was he in GP? And Clank. Yeah, we went. Hang on. Yoink. He's already going to get the Yoink activated this turn, so I don't need to block this at all. Could have asked updated decks. It's Fortune and Gang Plank. Which has Ionia. Maybe he's running elusive cards. Probably not. Okay, so there's a control the sea 17 hours ago. Maybe this could be it. So it's Ionia adjust for Spirit's Refuge and deny, maybe. Huh, oh, okay. So it's pretty much just standard build water nonsense and then deny and Spirit's Refuge. Yeah, this is looking like the list. Okay, we'll swing. His spells is standard. Oh, there's only one pilot in this list. This is probably the list that he's playing as well. Um, we should feel comfortable going down a little bit of HP here. How does he deal with the Zed? Where's Refuge? He doesn't really deal with it this turn necessarily though. You can out you can yoink me for days. Will? Will's not on this list. Oh, I took my chances. I'll play the buffed up Emin Hulk here. Now <laughs> we buffed up the conspirator. That's pretty cool. I guess if I just go wide enough against him. He might not have the answers. We have a will in our hand of our own. It's really powerful. I think it would be a mistake for me to pull a keg. Unless I want to swing with the Hawk, maybe. And do this. This should be okay. I can go as far as actually to argue that this is more smart. So I can guarantee clearing the keg. And it doesn't really make a difference either way, honestly. We'll probably make a rain here. And how does he land? Decently. Decently. He didn't have three two. But he hit he hit the vulnerable. Actually that couldn't have gone much better. Yes. We need the spell mana for next turn. We'll go six. Seven plus eight. Seven. I have six mana if I do this. Six mana is fine. Nice. Misfortune. Guess I'll will you now. So unless he has elusive units, I'm not really sure what he's gonna do here. Um, I think I'm okay with this. Love ya. Do I not just always play the hatchling? Plays uh, this and has another, has another Maker Rain in hand. That would be a little annoying. He might whiff though. Probably a mistake swinging then into that, honestly. He might whiff the Maker Rain. Actually, if he has Spirit's Refuge. Oh, that's not a Spirit's Refuge kind of play. Uh, looks like he whiffed it. 
Nice. Is that lethal right? Yeah, it's lethal. Interesting deck. Nah. We'll be fine. Attacking even. Kink our way fine, it gets better on the evens. But we're opening up into his TF. So I will just keep the Hawk. Usually if I'm on an evens, I keep Wayfinder. It's generally pretty strong. But since we are versing a TF deck, I don't think it'll be as effective. This could be really good. As long as you can't clear the Omen Hawk. Nice. Interesting, interesting interaction if we actually buff the one drops to get played. Keg. Sure. Joel Hunters. Huh. I should probably let this happen. I'll flip back the Ermin Hawk. I don't think I need a bank mana for any reason next turn. I find myself in a weird scenario now where maybe I still just play the Wayfinder. I guess the real question is if I can beat Twist of Fate. And no, I don't think. I think I can. I think if I play around it, I might be able to beat it. As long as I can find an elusive unit. I need to like buff up, buff up a big elusive unit and then like push a lot of damage that way. I can try and outvalue him. This puts him in a weird scenario now where does he play Twist of Fate? Does he play it now? It's strange because maybe I want him to use the keg now. I think I want him to actually activate the keg now. So I'm going to use Twin Disciplines. I could have played the... Uh, I could have played the Retreat there for sure. But I actually don't know if it's worth it. Oh. What a card though. Imagine having a card in this game where every time you see it, you just hate seeing it. That can't be healthy. I need to buff something elusive. Please give me something. I'm not greedy. My friends a 2-2 two -two Omen Hall? Get it. I'll get behind that. Yep. I got buffed. And there may have been a reason I actually trade my Omen Hawk into this, expecting this to be my line. Except for you. Why would I swing with this? He's probably going to value block. He wouldn't double value block me, would he? I'm just going to swing with everything. Unfortunately, as funny as it sounds, retreating the Omen Hawk. I don't think that's effective right now. You're kidding me. Oh, I don't really want to buff this, but it's kind of like the only play right now. What the fuck? Ah, oh, shit. This is, um, fucked up. Now it's not as fucked up. Your red card here with the keg? I guess I have to deny that. This life blade. Oh man. Oh yuck. What do I what do I, I don't I don't know what to do? Live Ionia is somewhere in my deck. You're actually homo. Um.
Oh wait, that still connects. I know that. Yeah, so any plans I had, honestly guys, I don't think I can win now. Simply because of that one yoink. I should have played around it. Oh, hang on. What is this play? Oh, is there a way I can do this? There is, um... This is pretty crazy. He prioritizes the. So I summoned the 5 5 for it first to kind of force a block from his life blade. Maybe both the elusive should have gone first. I don't think it's going to matter. Now let's imagine he didn't get that 4 healing. Or the 4 healing is about to get now. So it's minus eight on this number. Yeah. Also good twin. Yeah. I think I did the best I could. I don't think any other line would have really made much sense. I could just be dead to like the cards in his hand. Oh, it's kind of strange that I might have to send this back to his hand. Go to the enemy, you want to. So he knocks you in favor, it's a problem. I think I must let this go through. I'm not mistaken. Okay, there's no way I can will my own one, because I just died of this. I have to, like, will whatever he knocks you in favors. Alright, cool. I don't see any reason not to play this huge idiot. I forgot we buffed this Wayfinder. That could be kind of interesting. So we play Swain. I think at this point, I just gotta send back. Wait till he commits an attack. He wouldn't attack here, would he? Fine. Wait, is one of those Mega Rains hitting my face? That's that's hitting my holy shit. The Mega Rain did hit my face. We've been fine. Unless I retreat the. If I retreat the <laughs> Swain, I just lose on the open attack. Uh, hey, what could I have done differently there? Nothing. I don't think I could have done anything differently. That Maker Rain could have hit anywhere else. Absolutely anywhere else. There is no, there's no way I can outplay this, can I? No, unfortunately not. What a bummer. Well played. Oh. Sick of these yoink cards, man. Holy shit. I love it. That is the gameplay I've missed from Hearthstone for so long.